Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. Today we'll have our quiz number 12. Our quiz number 12, for those of you who have been watching the vocabulary videos on a regular basis, you know that the, at the end of every five days we have a quiz. Today we'll have our quiz number 12, which is based on the words that we learned from day number 56 through 60. Let's get going. Let's get going. Number first, the day that we learn on day number uh, words that we learn on day number fifty six. The first word we learned was ramshackle. Again, if you are interested in learning the proper pronunciation, if you are interested in learning the mean proper meaning in this full context uh, in, 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 with all the elaborations and all the explanations then the thing to do is to watch the actual video. Just type in vocabulary words, day 56. Right now we're going to go a little bit faster because we have to cover the words of all the words from five days in one video. Do you understand? Ramshackle. Ram. Shack. Oh, it's an adjective. What does it mean when we describe something as ramshackle? It means something that is falling apart, something that is falling apart because of due to due to poor poor construction poor quality or maybe it was constructed properly perhaps it was constructed with quality material and quality workmanship but it was not well maintained later on just because something is constructed properly doesn't mean it's going to stay in that shape if you do not maintain it properly on a regular basis periodically. Do you understand? So ramshackle can also mean something that is falling apart due to poor maintenance or poor construction or or poor maintenance. Maintenance of course is the noun of maintain. You have to maintain it. You have to take care of it. Something that is crumbling. Something that is falling apart. Something that is Crumbling. Something that is rickety. Something that is decrepit. Something that is decrepit. Something that is run down. Something that is run down. Run down is, as far as I know, is hyphenated. This word here is rickety. Rick. It. Rickety. Rickety means something that is run down, something that is not in a good shape, something that is feeble. Something rickety means something that is feeble, something that is weak, something that is infirm. F I R M. Infirm. The word infirm comes from the word firm. If it's firm, it's strong, it's solid. If it's not strong, if it's not solid, then we say it's infirm. It's the in infirm is the antonym of firm, something that is not firm, something that is run down. And the word is rickety. Let's learn the word decre de decrepit. I'm going to put the pronunciation here. D. Crap, the crap, it, decrepit. Decrepit means something that is run down, something that is broken. They all mean basically the same thing. They are all related. So the words we words we're talking about are ramshackle, rickety, and decrepit. Let's learn one more word. If we can squeeze something else down here, last word, and the lower word is going to be. Dilapidated. D. Lap. E. You have to know all all the syllables separately. D. Lap. E. D. Dip. Dilapidated. That's how we say. It. Dilapidated means 
it's not it's not uh, well maintained it's decaying it's crumbling it's falling apart it's run down it's not it's not well taken care of it's not well taken care of it is dilapidated the building is dilapidated it is run down it's ra it's ramshackle it's it's rickety it's it's not in good shape let's move on then day number 57 On day 57, we learn the difference between the word effect and effect. Now, if you do not want to watch day 57, that was the original video, but I just taped about, about 10 minutes ago, I taped a new video explaining the difference of the two difference in the two words with a nice mnemonic device in it. Just type in, just type in effect versus effect 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 versus if effect versus effect along with my name just type that in and the video will pop right up and learn the difference between the two words when to use which word and what parts of speech is or what part of what parts of speech they belong to I'm going to leave it up to you to take care of it I'm not going to do it right now let's keep on going then we are on day number 58 then. On day 58, the very first word we learned was repertoire. It's important that we know how to pronounce it properly. Rap or repertoire is a noun. It's a list of things that you can do as an artist, list of things that you can do as an artist is a range, range or list of maybe songs, maybe plays, maybe operas, maybe performances, maybe roles that you can play that an actor is able to play. That an actor is able to perform range or, or, or range of skill or aptitude it can also mean a range or uh, a range of skills or aptitude of a person if you said this is part of my this is not part of my repertoire or this is not it's part of his repertoire that means this is not something he's able to do this is not what he usually does this is not part of his routine well that is part of there is a part of my repertoire that means I can do it. I know how to do it. I do it on a regular basis as an actor. It's just a things, list of things. That, uh, it's, it's just, these are just uh, usual roles that I play, uh, the songs that I can sing, the parts that I can play. And the, and, and the word is repertoire. Let's move on. The next word we learned was condone. Condone is a very simple, very straightforward word. As I said before, if you want to learn these words in details, you can you can type in the actual you can you can look for the actual video. This will be vocabulary words, day 58, and you will find these words. What does it mean to condone? Condone simply means to to forgive. To to forgive. To excuse someone. To excuse someone. It means to overlook to overlook but not as overlook in the sense that you neglected it but overlook in the sense that I know you I, I know what you did was not right I know what you did you was not right I know you did something wrong but uh, I'm gonna let it go I'm gonna overlook it this time I'm gonna excuse it this time I'm not gonna I'm not gonna hold you responsible for it I'm gonna forgive you this time I will condone your mistake uh, your action do you understand the word is condone Let's learn the next word. And the reason why, and the reason why the next word came uh, came in our conversation is because other me other way we can express the meaning of the word condone. Other way we can express the meaning of the word condone is to say it, it condone means to refrain, refrain from blaming. If you refrain from blaming, then 
then you are condoning it, you are excusing it, you are overlooking it. But refrain is a tricky word, it's a tricky word because it has two meanings. So we're going to learn both of the, both of the meaning of the word refrain just now. Refrain has two meanings, two entirely different meanings depending on how it is being used as what part of speech. Let's first talk about refrain as a noun and then we'll talk about refrain as a word. Well, we already know what it means as a verb, refrain as a verb means uh, to keep from doing something, to keep from doing something, to, to, to keep oneself from doing something, to restrain oneself, to restrain oneself to abstain. For example, somebody might tell you, uh, please refrain from smoking. In my house, we do not smoke. Please refrain from smoking. In other words, don't do it. Keep yourself from doing something. Please refrain from smoking. In the classroom, please refrain from using your cell phone. Or in the classroom, please refrain from, that's the idiom, refrain from is the idiom, refrain from. That's how you will use it here as a verb, refrain from. Please refrain from swearing. Don't swear in the class, it's not a good idea. Do not cuss in the class, refrain from swearing, refrain from using your cell phones, refrain from smoking. We do not want those things here. Please don't do them. Refrain. Now the meaning of the word refrain is as a noun. As a noun is an entirely different word. Refrain is a phrase, a phrase, or a line, or a line that is repeated, that is repeated at a regular interval, regular interval, in a song or a poem. In a song or a poem. If a song if a song becomes a hit song, if a song becomes a hit song, people remember the song from one particular line. One particular line they remember the song from, they remember the song, and the reason why they remember that one particular line is because that line is repeated at regular interval at the end of each part that we repeat the line. In a poem, in a song, and that line, that phrase, is called a refrain. It is a refrain. It's a noun. But that here is it being used as a noun. Let's keep on moving, shall we? Let's see if we're done with the word refrain. The next word we learned was... Next word we learned was... Myopia. My... O. Notice the long I. My... O. P, again the long E, P, and then last syllable is O, uh, myopia. Don't say myopia. It's not myopia, it's myopia. Myopia, O, uh, at the end, last syllable, O, uh, myopia. It's a noun. It's a noun. What does it mean? Again, it has... Oh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's first talk about what the word literally means. It literally it means uh, having difficulty, when you have difficulty seeing distant object. When you have difficulty seeing distant objects. In other words, you have, no, no, you have no trouble reading a newspaper, you have no trouble reading the book. If as long as it's close to your eyes, you can read it. But if you're driving, if you're driving, you have trouble reading the road signs, you have trouble reading the distant object, you're suffering from myopia. It's a disease. It's, an eye, it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem with the eyes, and you say that I have myopia, which means I cannot see the distant objects. Another word for myopia is...
short sight, sight as in we able to see, and the noun of sight is sightedness. Short sighted. If, if you're suffering from short sightedness, that means you cannot see the distant objects. I know it's counterintuitive, they call it short sightedness, but it means that you can't see the far away things. You can see the, the things that are close by, close, uh, close to you, just just uh, just fine, but you cannot see the distant object. In that case, you said that I am suffering from short sightedness. I wear glasses because I have short sightedness. I am short sighted. Do you understand? I have I have myopia. That's the literal meaning of the word. That's the literal meaning of the word. But many a times you will see this word myopia being used metaphorically. And when it is used metaphorically, it is typically used in its adjective form. This is a noun. In adjective form is myopic. Myopic. Uh, if you if you describe somebody as taking a myopic view or myopic uh, myopic uh, posture, that simply means that the person is unable to think of. Person is unable or unwilling to plan for distant future only thinking of the near future many a times many a times large corporations are accused of behaving myopically of take, taking a very myopic view because they're not interested in how the firm will will survive and how the firm will thrive uh, 10 years, 5 years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the road, they are only interested in what sort of dividends they can declare next quarter. That's their only concern. As long as we can declare nice, juicy, fat dividend at the end of the quarter, everything is hunky-dory. That's a pretty myopic view. That's a very myopic view because you're only looking at 2, 3, 3 months down the road, 6 months maybe at the most, that's it. Most German firms on the other hand, German Germany, uh, German firms have a reputation for being not being myopic. They, they plan ahead of time. They, they don't think of what, what's going to happen to the firm next year, but five years, ten years down the road. Because they do not take myopic view. They, they, think, they, think, uh, they think of a distant futures. Anyway, that was the word myopia. Let's move on. We are on day number 59 now. Day 59. On day 59 we learn Two words. Apocryphal and spurious. These words are very often confused, very often confused, and they are used synonymously, but they are not synonym. They are not synonym. Do you understand? Just give me one second, I want to see something here. And if we did not do it, then I won't go there. But if we did do it... No, we did not do it. The word that I just used was this. Of course, it's a very simple word. I don't know why I'm making this big fuss about it. You'll see in a second why I'm making big fuss about it. You know what synonyms are. Synonyms are two words that have the same meaning. This is a noun. This is a noun. How do we make an adjective out of synonym? When you make an adjective out of synonym, the pronunciation changes a little bit. Synonym becomes synonymous. It's pronounced synonymous. And here, I just use the word not as a noun, not as an adjective, but as an adverb. As an adverb. What we said just now was, what we said just now was, that these two words are very often used by many folks synonymously as if they were synonyms they use many people use these two words synonymously and as in as, as in, in other words they use these words in place of the other as if you can use either of these words in the context because they think that they are because they think that they are synonyms they are not synonyms they are not synonymous let's learn the difference shall we let's, let's learn the difference let's first learn the pronunciations a pak ro full apocryphal as you can see a pak ro full apocryphal 
And this one is pronounced. Just give me one second here. I'm still here, not going anywhere. But of course, if you say it slowly, one syllable at a time, it sounds very silly. You have to put it together. Spurious. Spurious. Apocryphal. What is the difference between the two? I'm not going to write everything together, everything right now on the blackboard. Let's just keep it very simple. When you describe something as spurious, when you describe something as spurious, what you're telling me is that it is bogus. It is bogus. It is fake. It is not real. It is not real. It is not authentic. It is not authentic. It's a forgery. It's a forgery. There is no doubt about it. There is absolutely no doubt about it. I am 100% sure it is fake. For example, well, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. A wise financial decision that I made just a couple of weeks ago. I happened to be in New York City. I live about 150 miles from New York, about three hours from New York City. But just a couple of weeks ago, I happened to be in New York City and I was walking on the sidewalk there. And I came across this nice gentleman who was selling Rolex. And being well-to-do guy that I am, well-to-do has two hyphens. What does it mean to be well-to-do? Well-to-do means that you are affluent, you are rich. If you are rich, if you are affluent, you are well-to-do. So being well-to-do guy that I am, when I came across this nice gentleman who was selling Rolex, I bought two of them. Yes, I bought two of them. $10 each. $10 each. Nice, eh? Well, obviously, if somebody is selling you a Rolex for $10, Obviously, it's bogus. It's fake. It's not. It's not authentic. It's a forgery. It's not the real thing. Nobody in the right mind sells a Rolex for ten dollars. There is no doubt that it is fake. It's only ten dollars. What do you expect? Obviously, it's not real. It's spurious. Now, on the other hand, if you tell me that you went in a nice jewelry store, you went in a nice jewelry store and you paid ten thousand dollars for the watch, and you bring the watch home and I, and somebody looks at it, somebody who is an expert looks at it, and they tell you. Well, I know you bought it for $10,000 and I know you bought it in a nice jewelry store, but I don't think it's real. I don't think it's, it's, it's genuine. I don't think, uh, I don't, I think it's bogus. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's not real. I think it's not real. I think, I think it's not real. Now, when you have a doubt about something, you're not 100% sure you think that it's not real, you have doubt about it, you're not 100% sure, then you say that it is apocryphal. Do you understand? So a story, if somebody tells you a story, you might describe a story as apocryphal. If somebody tells you, if you ask the, if you ask your, the student why you were late and the student gives you this nice elaborate story, well, you're not going to blame Mr. Smith what happened uh, when, I was, when, uh, when I was coming to school with my dad. We got stopped halfway through, the, through our journey in the middle of the road. Uh, a, 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 a saucer, a flying saucer, landed in right in front of our car, and the, and the and the Martians came out, and they asked us because they were lost, and they asked they were asking us for their directions to the mall, and by the time I gave them directions, of course I was late for the school. Uh, it's an apocryphal story. Of course I'm being silly. Of course stories such as that one is not apocryphal. Stories such as that one is not apocryphal. It's spurious. That story is just it's a lie. It's a spurious story. It's not apocryphal. On the other hand, if you tell something that, that, that has a chance of being true, then you describe that as, apocry as apocryphal. Don't confuse the two words. As I said, people who do not know any better, they go around using these words synonymously. They are not synonyms. One shows the doubt. One shows the uncertainty of whether or not what you're dealing with is genuine, in which case you say it is apocryphal. And one tells me that you have no doubt at all that it is lie, it is a fake thing, it's a forgery. You say it is spurious. Let's move on. Let's move on then. The next two words we learn.
or decree and add it. Decree and edict. Edict, you see it's E. Edict and decree. They both mean the same thing. They are synonyms. They are synonyms. What is a decree? What is an addict? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a formal proclamation. It's a formal call. It's a it's an order. It's an authoritative order. A formal it's a formal proclamation either by a king or a president or the government and they tell you that you must do this thing from now on, this is a new law, this is what you're going to do. Well, that's a decree, that's an addict, you cannot go against it, otherwise you'll get in trouble. You understand? Let's move on to day number 60, the last, last day, day number 60. In day 60 we learn few words and they, all of these words have to do with blood, having to do with blood. Let's start then. The very first word we learned was let's pronounce let's pronounce so it has a nasal sound not san not san this is san this would have been san this is if you put a capital in it's a nasal sound so so son foie son foie foie in French means cold and son means blood son means blood so what does it mean literally? it means to have cold blood now if you have cold blood what it means metaphorically is that you're calm you are calm. How do you spell calm? C A L M. It means to stay calm. You are not excited. You are not excited. You are not excited. You are not angry. You are not upset. If somebody is not upset, somebody is not excited, somebody is not uh, uh, losing their temper, you're not, you're not uh, losing your temper. If you're not losing your temper, then you're, sh you're having, the, then you, uh, the, then you show, then you're having sans foi. Sans foi means to keep your composure, to keep, to keep your composure, to keep your temper. On the other hand, if you go fly off the handle then you do not have so far. It means not to be, it means not to be, not to be perturbed. Not to be perturbed. To be perturbed, if you're perturbed, that means you are upset, you are you are you are not calm, you are agitated. Perturbed is the word we learned. On day number 19 in our lesson, just type in vocabulary words day 19, you will see the word perturb. So far means to stay calm, to have cold blood. Now don't confuse this word which means to have cold blood with the other phrase in the English language which means to do something cold bloodedly. If you if you if you if you if, you, if somebody commits a heinous crime, you said he committed the crime in cold blood. That means to do something in cold blood, in that, that context means to, to, to do it without any emotions, without any remorse, without any guilt. He was a, he, he's a cold-blooded murderer. Murderer. He's a cold-blooded murderer. Now that's a different meaning. That's not what we're talking about here. Here, it literally it means to have cold blood, but cold blood means as in, you're not excited, you're calm. You're not losing your temper. Let's move on. But it comes from, as I said, so foie, so, so means blood, foie means cold, from, from the French terms. From the French words. In French, they would say, il fait, il fait chaud, il fait froid. It's hot, it's cold, il fait froid. Let's 
let's keep on going. The next word we have is sanguine. Sang. Again, it's the same part first, same part as before, same prefix, but for some strange and inexplicable reason. For some strange and inexplicable reason, in this word, the word so is not pronounced as so, it is pronounced sang. Because English language is eccentric. English language doesn't have any rhythm or rhyme. English language is weird. It doesn't have any system to it. So in, in the previous context, the prefix is pronounced as it is pronounced in French, which is son. Here, the same exact word in this context is not pronounced son. Here we will say sang. Sanguin. Sang. Sanguin. Sanguin means Literally, again, let's learn the word literal. Literally, it means of the color of blood. Of the color of blood, of course, simply means to be ruddy. To be ruddy. Metaphorically, so if you're ruddy, that means you have a rosy cheeks, so you have a rosy glow to it. It looks pinkish. You have a pinkish hue on your cheeks. It looks ruddy. You understand? Sanguine. That's the literal meaning. Sanguine means of the color of the blood. You have a rosy cheeks. You 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 look you look optimistic. You look happy. You look content. So that's the metaphorical meaning. Sanguine means to be cheerful. To be cheerful. To be optimistic. To be confident. To be content. If you look, if you look very content, you look very satisfied, very happy, very optimistic, and you have a, uh, as I said, pinkish hue. Pinkish. Pinkish comes from the word pink, and the word is hue. Hue means shade. If you have a pinkish hue on your on your face, on your cheeks. Well, you look very happy, you look very content, you look very self-satisfied, you look very optimistic, you look very sanguine, you look very sanguine, you look, your face looks like a color of blood, you look very sanguine, color of blood, you look ready. Let's move on then. Again, these words are tricky, they are related, but they are tricky, because the next word we're going to learn, of course, also has to do with blood, but it's a different word. Watch what happens. So again, we have S S A N G sang. And then we have G U I N, and now instead of E, we will have A R Y. It's a different word, it is no longer this word, it's a different word. Let's, let's, let's see what this word is. I'm going to erase the meaning now because we're talking about a different word, different pronunciation. Again, the first part is the same, saying. Sang, gua, gua, ne, ne, e. Sanguinary. Sanguinary. Again, it has to do with the prefix of blood. Sang, as in song. Sanguinary. This word means to be bloodthirsty. To be blood, to be bloodthirsty. It's one word. Bloodthirsty. Uh, to uh, to be savage, to be gory, having to do with, having to do, having to do with carnage. If you say that he took a sanguinary posture, if he took a sanguinary posture, that means he was bloodthirsty, he was very violent, he wanted to fight, he wanted to kill somebody. Don't confuse the word sanguinary with the word sanguine. When you describe somebody as sanguine, you're saying Michael is optimistic. He's sanguine. He's sanguine about the exam. If you say Michael is sanguinary, if Michael is sanguinary, that means he's about to kill somebody. He's bloodthirsty. He's about to commit some crime, violent crime. He's about to uh, uh, do something that will uh, that will have uh, that will be very bloody, very gory. Do you understand? Very. Very different words, very different meanings. 
it is up to you to keep them separate. The very last word we're going to talk about is this word right here, gori. Let's, let's talk about it right here, gori. Gor, e, gori. It's an adjective. It can also be used as a noun in this form as gore. Gore, G O R, gore, which simply means blood. Which simply means blood. So, one more time, gore is blood. Gori means, means, means. Bloody, gory, bloody. Gore means blood and gory means bloody. If, if, if somebody is telling you a cert certain scene from a movie or somebody is expl explaining to you what happened, why they were, why they were late for the, for the work and they are getting into ex a lot of detail as to exactly what happened on the accident and uh, particularly if you think that they are lying, particularly if you think that you are lying and you are annoyed, you might say to them, well, listen, leave me, uh, leave, leave the gory details out, okay? Just get the punchline, why are you late? Leave the gory details out. Leave the gory details out. Leave the bloody details out. I don't want to hear all the, all the details, extreme, uh, uh, gruesome details of the, uh, of the scene, of the crime. Leave the gory details out. Just tell me the bottom line. What happened? Just give me the nub of the story. Just give me the... Just give me the nub of the story. Just give me... Just tell me exactly what happened, just give me the essence of the story, just give me the gist of the story. I don't want the detail. Leave the gory details out. I'm looking here at the nub in my list, in the index to tell you when we learned the word nub. We learned it on day number 11. Day 11. Again, it's up to you. If you're interested in learning it, just type in vocabulary words, day 11, and you will learn the word nub. Bye now.